Hello and welcome to Channel 2S, your home for Gunpla news, reviews, and more. I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and today we're looking at the completed high grade Iron Blooded Orphans EO Frame Sheet In. In Iron Blooded Orphans, the sheet in is Tekadon's basic grunt suit, and the overall look of the mobile suit does reflect that with a generally boxy appearance and very simple details. The feet, the arms, the legs, the backpack, they all have a very boxy appearance, and that really lends to this guy's grunt like look. The lower legs also look particularly interesting from the side with a sort of gap here that seems to imply that this part and this part should be able to move separately in some manner. Unfortunately with this being a high grade, that's not possible. Still though, it's a pretty interesting detail. The stock molded colors for the Sheedon are a very dark red, a sort of purplish gray, and a bone white color. Now I am very fond of the color of red they used for this kit. I think it looks really good. It's a very unique color that stands out nicely. The only problem with it is that it does show nub marks very easily. The off-white sections that are used for the chest and weapons of this kit really aren't that bad. It's not my favorite color ever, but that's mostly because under some lights it does have a bit of a greenish tint and I'm not a huge fan of that. But for the most part I think it looks pretty good. However, I can't speak very highly of the color they chose for the inner frame of this model. It's a kind of light purple color that does look gray under some lights, but once you get up close and really look at it, it starts to look more like something you'd see on an easter egg and less like a color that should be on a realistic mobile suit. For that reason I will be painting this model as soon as I can in a more realistic gray color. So the articulation on the Sheedon is pretty much your standard IBO fare. Head goes up to here, down to here, it rotates all the way around, the shoulder pads move up, the arm moves out at a hinge, there is a ball joint underneath that hinge, and even though the shoulder polycaps don't swing out, you can still get a pretty good range of forward movement. Of course there is a full rotation at the shoulder, below the shoulder there is a full swivel, and below all that we do have just a single joint for the elbow, which can be a bit disappointing at first, but I've messed around with this guy a little bit, put him in some different poses, and I have not found his elbows to be a limiting factor. Moving down to the wrist, there is the same ball joint we always see on every single model, and while we're looking at the hands, I'm going to bring up something interesting that I did notice while I was building this guy, which is that this guy, unlike most of the Iron Blooded Orphans kits, actually has a little bit of a cutaway between the fingertips and the palms, which makes his hands look just a little more realistic. It's a really nice touch and something I'm surprised to see them introduce on a grunt suit. Of course, this is an Iron Blooded Orphans model, which means the torso movement is absolutely insane. There is a forward torso crunch, and as you slide the torso down, this little abdomen piece swings forward to accommodate it. There is a very deep backwards torso bend, although if you bend it too far, these pistons end up just kind of floating in the air, and that does look a little bit silly. And then of course there's a full unrestricted waist rotation. The side skirts do get completely out of the way, however one thing I've found with these is if you rotate them down, they can sometimes get caught in the lower section of the clip and not want to slide up, so you have to kind of pull them up in their little clip and wiggle them up in order to get them out. It's not a big deal, and if you're careful, you shouldn't break anything. It is just kind of annoying when you're posing this guy because you have to constantly be fiddling with these and making sure they're able to move freely. The front skirt armor is a little bit weird as well because it's actually one single piece that you kind of rotate up on this bottom part so there's no split in here. It's just a single piece of armor. And now once all that armor is out of the way, you can get the leg up to here and out to here with zero restriction from the side skirts. Backwards movement is about what you'd expect from a high grade with a fixed back skirt. There is a rotation below the hip, and there is a double jointed knee that just barely has enough clearance to show off its full range of movement. And I'm going to correct myself right now, there is actually no way to show off this guy's full range of movement, because one joint bends this far, and the other joint bends this far. So basically this guy has a knee bend of over 180 degrees, which means that even if you wanted to, due to the laws of physics, you really couldn't use his full range of motion anyways. Now down here at the bottom of this guy's legs, we come to probably my least favorite part of this kit, and that is the feet. Now the way these are constructed isn't that great. This whole front section is kind of stuck on by a little poly cap. And there is a hinge joint up here combined with a ball joint, so you can rotate the foot back fairly far and forwards pretty far as well. However, as you're moving the foot around, it is very easy for these two pieces that are sandwiched together around the polycap to come loose since there's only a couple of very short pegs holding them in. And on top of that, the polycap connection for the toe joint here isn't very strong either, so it's not at all uncommon for this guy's foot to just kind of start falling apart on you as you're posing him. He also has a little bit of an ankle tilt as well. And while I did express some dissatisfaction at the design of his feet earlier, they do actually do a pretty good job of holding him up. 
So ultimately, while the Sheedon is not the most articulated thing we've got now of IBO, it certainly has more than enough points of articulation to get it into pretty much any pose you want. So before we move on to accessories, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about this guy's visor, because when I was moving the head around, you probably already saw what this thing can do. Basically, if you take this and you pull it out, you can push it back in down here, and it makes it look like his visor is down over his face, and you can almost actually kind of slide it up and down. However, it's not a very strong connection, so more than likely you're just going to end up popping it out anyways, so I usually just take it out and replace it. And with his visor down, his head does look very cool. I honestly can't decide whether I like it better up or down. I kind of like it both ways. And this is also where the only two stickers on this model are used. There's one up here for the optic on the visor, and then one for the main camera on the head. And while we're on the subject of little details, I will mention that the thrusters in this guy's legs actually have a pretty good range of motion. Normally when you have little ball jointed thrusters like this on a high grade, the ball joint's kind of just an easy method of application and really doesn't give a lot of movement. But this guy actually has a noticeable amount of adjustment that you can make to his leg thrusters. That's pretty cool. So now we're going to look at his accessories, and this guy certainly has a pretty awesome selection of stuff. So for its primary long range weapon, the EO Frame Sheedon has a very cool looking machine gun. It's very simple to apply to him, you just kind of stick it down in his hand, you don't even need to take the back off the hand. And when you're done with the rifle, there is a little connector on the back here, and you can just lift this up, and there's a little hole in the top of the gun right here. You can just stick it on here, just like that, and then fold it down, and now he has his weapon stored on his back skirt. And if you think this weapon storage slot up here looks familiar, you are right, because it's the same slot that the Roe used, which means the Roe's weapons and the Sheedon's weapons are cross-compatible, and you can store either weapon on either kit. Now, for close-range combat, the Sheedon has his Partisan. And the Partisan is a very funky-looking weapon. I've seen some people compare it to a screwdriver, with this being the handle and this being the bit, and quite frankly, I hate everyone who said that, because I can no longer get that image out of my head. But comparisons aside, the Partisan is actually a pretty fun weapon to pose this guy with, and it even has an extendable handle, which means you can use it as either a spear or a shorter single-hand sword. And when the fight's over, you can take one of these little C-clip connectors right here and stick it into the hole inside of his backpack, and then take his partisan, collapse the handle, and just clip it in right here. And this gives him some very nice, unobtrusive weapon storage. So far, this kit is reminding me of the Roe in all the right ways. Now the Sheen's next weapon really isn't anything special, it's just this basic little arm gauntlet. It looks okay from the front, and if you flip it over, it's actually got some pretty nice detailing down there, so if you want to panel line that, that would look pretty cool. And then you just attach it to his arm by plugging the peg on the bottom into the hole on his arm, and it makes a nice little auxiliary addition to his arm, gives him some extra punching power, gives him a little bit of defense boost, generally looks pretty awesome. But sometimes, having your left arm protected just isn't quite enough. Sometimes, you need just a little more defense. And that's where the Sheedon's Riot Shield comes in. This thing looks super awesome. There isn't a lot of detail here in the front, but if you flip it around to the back, we got a bunch of panel lines in here. We got a big handle for him to grab onto. There's a peg here that attaches it to his arm. It's a very simple shield. It's just three pieces with a little slot up here so we can look through it. But it does its job very well. And once you have this guy with Riot Shield in hand, it really fills the kit out, makes him look the part, and also makes him look just a little less disposable. And this model has one final feature that I want to talk about that pushes it right over the edge of awesome, and that is the weapon hard points all over the kit. So just like on the Helmviga Ryan car, there are a lot of ports in this guy. He's got a port on each elbow, on each side skirt, and then one on each side of the backpack. And these ports are compatible with a lot of different Iron-Blooded Orphans models. So for starters, since they're all the same size port, this means you can do stuff like attach the partisan to his forearm or the shield gauntlet to his waist. The C-clips that hold the partisan in place are also the same size as the handles of a lot of other Iron-Blooded Orphans weapons, which means you can do stuff like take the Hyakuran sword and store it on his hip. And the weapon ports themselves are also compatible with a lot of other models, as you can see by the Schwab Gray's axe I have affixed to this guy's back. And with all the different connection points this guy has, and the plethora of option parts and weapons in the Iron Blooded Orphans line, it is very easy to turn this guy from a forgettable grunt into a badass one-man army. So by now it should come as no surprise to anyone watching when I say that I give the high-grade Iron Blooded Orphans Sheedon an unconditional thumbs up. It is a great looking grunt suit that's very simple, very unassuming out of the box, but with a little bit of work, a little add-on here and there, you can turn it into something awesome. 
I strongly recommend grabbing at least one of the option sets if you plan on picking this guy up and just tricking him out with all the weapons you possibly can. Iron Blade Orphans has had a very hit or miss high grade line, but this guy right here is definitely a hit. And that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. So as always, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and maybe even share it around with some friends to show them just how awesome the Sheedon is. If you're new to Channel 2S, be sure to subscribe for all sorts of awesome Gunpla content. And I do live stream from time to time, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. And as always, I'm your host, Second Soundwave, and I'll see you next time.